9 the effect of temperature and the rate of respiration love it looking at the required practical nine and we're looking at an investigation of the effect of temperature on the respiration of yeast now in the past in year eight when we did this we just basically put yeast which is a single cell organism into a solution of sugar and water and we stuck a balloon on the top of the conical flask and we put them at different temperatures and we looked at the size of the balloon of course at a level we're going to be doing something a little bit more complex and we need to be relating it to what we have learned in the chapter about respiration now remembering that respiration is made up of various parts we've got glycolysis which then leads into the link reaction which then leads into the Krebs cycle which then leads into oxidative phosphorylation so what we need to do is just remind ourselves a little bit about that okay so oxidative phosphorylation and the is the, is the final stage of respiration. And all the events that take place in that stage can be explained by the chemiosmotic theory. So coming from the Krebs cycle, if you remember, we have reduced NAD and we have reduced FAD. And that's bringing with it the hydrogen ions and that's all taking place if we remind ourselves of the structure of the mitochondria. It's got a smooth outer membrane and certainly very metabolically active cells have mitochondria with a, a lot of these cristae. And the Krebs cycle has taken place inside here. And the oxidative phosphorylation is going to take place on this membrane here. So the reduced NAD and the reduced FAD feed hydrogen ions towards this next stage and it's the electrons that enter this chain of reactions called an electron transfer chain. So the hydrogen ions that are brought by the reduced NAD and the reduced FAD enter, they donate electrons um, to electron to proteins that are sitting on this inner membrane here and the electrons what they do is they cause the movement of hydrogen ions to move into this inner mitochondrial space here and as those hydrogen ions move across and the electrons move down this chain the electrons lose energy and that energy is used to transport these hydrogen ions into this inner mitochondrial space by active transport. This movement of the electrons down this electron transfer chain ensures that only small amounts <clears throat> of energy are released at any one time. And that's much better than having a big explosive amount of energy released because we're better able to utilize it and we don't waste it. So the concentration of hydrogen ions builds up inside this inner mitochondrial space and over here what we've got is a membrane bound enzyme called ATP synthase and what happens is the hydrogen ions then diffuse out of here and as they do that ADP plus inorganic phosphate is converted to ATP which is then uh, ready for use by the cell. So then oxygen is our final acceptor of the hydrogen ions and of the electrons that have moved down this electron transfer chain and that whole process is called chemiosmotic theory. So in our experiment that's the theory behind it. We're using uh, methylene blue and it's similar to the photosynthesis experiment in a way Instead of the electrons going into our electron transfer chain, our electrons that come from reduced NAD and reduced FAD actually go into the methylene blue and they turn it from blue to colourless. So that's putting that against time, we can work out the rate of respiration and we can do that at different temperatures.